Welcome to Scratch Lesson 2. In this lesson we're going to learn a little bit about how to change your sprite, how to change the backdrop, and how to or learn a little bit more about the coordinate system in Scratch. So to begin with, uh, as you can see here, the cat has loaded by default again. Uh, every time you load Scratch the cat is present. So we're going to use a cat this time and we're going to make the cat do a few things. But to start off, we will change our backdrop. The backdrop that loads by default is a simple white backdrop, which is pretty darn boring. And we want to make this a little more interesting. So just like with the libraries for the sprites, there are libraries for backdrops. If you go over here to this position on the uh, Scratch Offline Editor, and you go down to this little icon here, we can choose a backdrop from the library. So we're going to click that. And as you can see, a lot of backdrops come up here and you can find one that looks interesting for you to use. I'm going to pick the desert one. I'm just going to double click that and that should show up in my scratch editor. Now you can see the backdrop looks a lot more interesting already. My cat is positioned approximately in the middle of my um, stage, which is all right, but I don't want it to be here. When I want it to start, I'd like my cat to be here where it looks like he's going to walk across the desert. So as you recall from our previous lesson, uh, we set up some coordinate systems. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to make new a new sprite. So I'm going to click on the sprite button here and I'm going to create a new sprite. This time I'm going to do it myself. So I'm just going to create those coordinate lines I did last time. Holding down the shift key, I'm going to use this line and I'm going to draw a line straight down my page like that. I'm going to center it as we did last class. Well, that's pretty good. And I'm going to draw, draw another sprite, similar to this one, except it's going to be a horizontal line, holding down the shift key so the line comes out completely horizontal. I'm also going to center that one. So the center of the sprite is where my crosshairs appear, and it doesn't have to be perfect for me in this tutorial, but I'm trying to get it right on. There it is. And it shows up on my screen. Now what I'll do is I'll center these vertical and horizontal lines so it looks like I have my coordinate axes. And as you recall, your stage is really nothing more than graph paper that has coordinates all over it where you can define the position of pretty much anything you want. So on sprite number two here, I'll go to script and I'll pick the event that launches it. In this case, as soon as we start the program, which means the green flag, we are going to set its position, its X and Y positions to 0, 0. And it should move to the 0, 0 position when I click the, click the green flag. There it goes. It's in the vertical 0 position. I'm going to do the same thing for my other sprite. But because this code is going to be exactly the same as the previous code, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to basically copy it instead of write it out again or or created a second time. I'm going to grab it and pull it across onto my second sprite and it looks like nothing happened but when I click on my second sprite that I made the other line it'll show this same code here. So now when I click the green flag both lines will position themselves so their centers are right on zero zero on my screen. So once again this is only for me to use for demonstration purposes to show you the coordinate system of your stage. You probably wouldn't do this unless you find some need for it uh, in your programs later on. We can always hide these sprites if they get in the way so that they don't interfere with what we're doing. But for right now, I want to show them so I can kind of show you the coordinate system. Uh, at this point, it might not be a bad idea to tell you how the directions work in uh, Scratch. Anything that is on, um, well, any angle that is at zero on scratch is at the top of the screen. So from here, if I have something pointing in the direction zero, it's pointing up. Pointing to the right would be 90 degrees and pointing straight down is 180. So anything in this, these two quadrants are positive angles going from zero, 90 to 180 degrees. Anything on the left hand side in these two quadrants here going from the top, it's at zero. This is negative 90 and negative 180 degrees. You can point a sprite in any direction based on that coordinate system. So my cat, click on my cat here, the sprite. 
I want the code so the cat actually walks across my screen and that means that I'm going to actually use two costumes for my for this cat. It has two costumes built in. If I click on the costume tab you'll see there are two costumes for this particular cat. The cat is one object but it has two different screen images that I can use costume one and costume two. Now if you want to know where the center of this cat is we can always go to these crosshairs over here and click on them and it shows that it's positioning the cat's center just a little bit off of its mouth. Um, that might be okay. This cat's got a really big head so uh, that might not be a bad place. Usually on a body your center of gravity or center of mass is actually somewhere near the middle near your belly button and we could position the center of the cat here but I'm actually going to for reasons that will become very obvious quickly position the center down by the bottom of his feet and the vertical center cuts the cat pretty much in half right there like that okay that's for costume one for costume two I'm going to do the same thing again and I'm going to position its center straight down here at the bottom of its foot like that okay now if I say cat should be in point or the center of the cat is located at zero zero its feet will go up to zero zero on the screen I don't actually want to do that I want the cat to start down low somewhere around here so if I look at my mouse position with these coordinate systems and I move my mouse to this position I can see that I want my cat's X position to be around negative 200 and its Y to be negative about 150 or something like that so I'll come back to my script make sure I've selected my cat and do the same thing I did before under events um, let's say when the space bar or when I click this thing I'm going to decide its position I'll go to the motion blocks choose its X set X and set Y but not to zero zero because that would put it right in the middle of my screen I'm going to set X to negative 200 and my Y to negative 150 and hit this green flag and see where it puts it uh, it's a little bit uh, it's alright I want my cat to be a little bit more to the left I'm gonna go negative 220 and hit the green flag and it starts a little bit more off to the left okay so that's step number one step two when I press the key the space bar I want the cat to start moving across my screen but I actually want it to look like it's walking so I'm going to choose this forever loop which I caution you to be careful with because any code you put in this forever loop will continually be executed forever in the order that it's put in here which can be a dangerous thing if you're not careful and we'll go to motion we'll choose move 10 steps we will then change the costume of the cat so the costume will go to costume 2 then we're going to make it move another 10 steps and switch back to costume 1 when that executes it will look like the cat's walking because it will be flipping alternating between costume 2 and costume 1 and we'll give it a shot and see what happens here first I press the green flag to move it into position which it already is then when I press the space bar we'll see it move well that actually does not look like walking does it whoops come on back here cat if I press that space bar it kinda looks like it's sliding across the desert which is a pretty fancy trick but it's not what we want the reason for that is it's actually going through this chunk of code so quickly you can't really see the motion of the cat's legs we have to slow it down let's go to the control blocks choose wait and put it right here in the middle after it switches the costume to costume 2 it waits for a brief period of time so you can see that costume then moves 10 steps and switches back to costume 1 so let's not make it wait a second let's make it wait a half a second and we'll try this out again pressing the space bar okay we can see it changing costumes and it's moving much more reasonably across the screen but it is lurching because it's stopping after every time it switches to costume 2 let's make it so it doesn't lurch let's put another weight block right after it switches to costume 1 and we'll choose the same amount of time as we did before 0.5 seconds 
and you're going to see that it's going to look a little bit nicer now. When I press the spacebar, he's walking a little bit more uniform rate, but really slowly, so I don't like that. I'm going to change his speed by changing the amount of time we wait. Instead of 0.5 seconds, let's knock that down to 0.2. And of course, we have to do it in both spots. And then press run. Press the spacebar. Oh, okay, now it looks like the cat's walking. He is kind of bouncing up and down a little bit, and that's because when we look at the costumes for the cat, we set the center to be at the bottom of his feet. For cat position costume two, I'm going to move that crosshair up just a little bit so it doesn't look like he's bobbing quite so much. And I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to play it, and we'll see there he's not bouncing up and down quite as much as he used to before. Okay, so there you have it. Now I could also change the number of steps. I can change those number of steps to five. So he won't appear to move as much, but his motion will look a little smoother. And that looks a little bit more like a cat walking. You, of course, would play with these when you're making your own program to make it look as realistic as possible. I'm going to leave it like this for the time being. And uh, we've got a cat that walks across the screen. Now, when he hits the edge here, being a cat, he does what he darn well pleases. He's hit the edge of the screen, and he just wants to keep going. Also notice that he doesn't completely disappear off the screen. There's always a little piece of your sprite that's going to show so you don't lose sprites off the edge of your screen and not even know they're there. That's a neat feature that Scratch incorporated so I don't lose track of my sprites. Now, I'll move him back to here, and like we did last time, I'm going to make it so when he hits the edge of the screen, he bounces. So if on edge, bounce. I'm going to put it right at the end of this code, and as this code executes and it comes into this forever loop, it goes through here sequentially. It gets to this block and says if it's on the edge, to bounce. If the cat's not on the edge of the screen, it just goes right past this code, back up into here, and keeps going. And only when the cat hits the edge will it bounce. So it's a good place to have this piece of code. Let's see what happens when I run this thing. Cat strolling along, minding his own business, enjoying a nice sunny day in the desert. And I probably should have made him move a little faster because when I hits the edge, this is what I want you to see what happens to him when he hits the edge here. Oh, he turned upside down and is walking upside down on the grass. Clearly not what you expected to happen. And not only that, he's not heading straight back, he's heading up at a bit of an angle. Now the reason for that is because the program, by default, sets the rotation of the cat to this rotation style, which means when he bounces off an edge, he's going to change by a little bit of an angle and then head back and, of course, rotate, and he's upside down. I don't want him to be upside down. I want him to flip left and right. So when I click this left-right feature, then he's going to actually bounce back. But this weird angle here is 79 degrees. I could make it so he comes at 90. However, playing with this little lever is not easy. You can get it to work like I just did, but it's much easier to set the, di the direction in the code. So when this cat actually begins to, or uh, this code executes, I want the direction of the cat to be pointing 90 degrees. I set it right there, and I don't have to worry about it anymore. I've also set the rotation to be back and forth. So we're going to try this one more time. And actually, I'm going to bump this up to 10 because it was going too slowly before. Okay, let's run this and see the cat strumming across the desert here, moving at a reasonable pace. Should bounce off this edge of my screen and come straight back. There he goes. Now that looks realistic, doesn't it? You might be wondering what this dot does. Let's give it a try and you can see for yourself. So I've got it set to this dot type of rotation. And some of you might have already figured it out because it's not going to flip directions. When he hits the edge, he's going to bounce back and do a moonwalk. There he goes. Which you may want to do. It depends on your application and what you're trying to achieve in your program. So he's kind of bouncing back but keeping his orientation the entire time. Okay, I want it to actually turn around and point in the direction that he's walking, which seems to be a little more realistic. Okay, I'll stop that right there. And that's how we can use the costumes and several costumes to make 
a cat or an object look like it's walking. You could have more costumes uh, that maybe put a, a hat on his head or something like that. There's really no limit to that. Before I get too much further, I want to go back to my stage backdrop, click on it, and you'll see that there's actually more than one backdrop here. We created the desert, but the original boring white backdrop exists. I have no purpose for it anymore. I'm going to right click it, and I'm just going to delete it. So my desert becomes my first backdrop, which is pretty much all I want. Now if I added a second backdrop, it could be another uh, scene that when my cat walks to this edge of the screen, the right edge, I could have it kind of disappear, the backdrop change, and it reappears on this side as if it traveled to another part of the world. That can have an interesting effect and make it look like your sprites moving around. So that's something you might want to try later on yourself. Okay, so how about um, hiding these sprites? You know about hiding these coordinate systems. I'm going to hide these guys and get them out of the way just because they don't really do much for me right there. And um, I think that will cover pretty much everything we wanted to do in this particular tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about um, making something called a variable, which is a very powerful programming tool. Variables exist in all programming languages. So that will enable us to interact a little bit with the cat and make it do some more interesting things. So this will conclude the video or the tutorial on Scratch, uh, changing the backgrounds. I recommend that you enter these scripts for the cat and follow along and do this yourself. Save your Scratch project so that when we start on lesson three, you'll have the same blocks of code in the same position. Okay, we'll see you for the next lesson.